Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. The sun is about to set. We're gonna be testing some MUA products. It was a race against time before the sun set. As you can see, this is at the end of the video. I've got my makeup on. You can't really see it, but obviously you're gonna to skip to another clip now and it's gonna be a lot brighter because it's just about that time for the sun to set. So um, yeah, sorry if the lighting isn't fan tabby doozy, but I hope you enjoy nonetheless. And all of these products are obviously vegan. MUA is completely vegan, very, very affordable. I definitely have my favorites. One shouldn't have favorites, but I do. I definitely have my favorites and also some misses in their product range. So I hope this video is useful. I will leave any shade names or any products that I used listed down below if you wanna check anything out. Um, MUA is available on Superdrug and their own website, I think. And oh no, they're also on Beauty Bay. I usually get stuff from Beauty Bay. All their products are priced at the cheapest. I think they're about a pound and at the most expensive, maybe like six or seven pounds. I really don't think they go above a tenner at all. And they've got some really good stuff. So I hope you enjoy this makeup look. It's not very interesting, so I will leave other makeup looks using MUA products down below if you wanna check those out as well. But yes. Without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so let's make a start. My skin is not loving life right now. I've got some hormonal breakouts around my chin. I've got one right in the center of my eyebrows, which is quite creepy. It's so directly in the center. Uh, but the foundation I have from MUA is very full coverage. So without further ado, bah, 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 bah. some of this stuff I bought myself, some of it I was really kindly sent in PR to test out and to review. So I've tried all of this stuff either once or a couple of times, so I can give you some mini reviews along the way. But first up is their Pro Base Primer Oil with Gold Flakes. This reminds me of something very, very specific. For me, this is that toffee vodka or that cinnamon vodka. I can't remember. I think they did two versions, the Smirnoff <laughs> vodka, um, which has gold flakes in it. And you can get like shots or put it in your drink and it has gold flakes in it. It's 100% a gimmick. Pretty sure this is a gimmick as well. The gold flakes, to my knowledge, don't do anything. I think it's just a funky kind of... Oh, also, my eyes are really sensitive today. I just look quite blotchy and bunged up, but I used a SPF earlier and it really stung my eyes, like beyond belief. So if my eyes look quite bloodshot, that would be why. I've got sensitive skin and sensitive eyes, so probably didn't pick the best day to use these products because the MUA base products for me, they're hit or miss. Um, this in particular, I think it's funky that it's got the gold flakes in it. It reminds me specifically of one night in Bristol, I think it was Lizard, Lizard Lounge, um, when we were having, this was back in my youth, I don't, I don't do shots anymore, but yeah, for some reason we were into the cinnamon shots or the toffee shots and they had little bits of gold in them. Um, that was not the classiest club I've ever been to, but it was a good night. So this is a little bit nostalgic for me. Um, but I would say this is supposed to bring glow to the skin and it does that. It does that and then some. Like it is, it almost makes your skin not wet looking, but it makes me feel a bit too glowy. So I'm just going to add two drops because I have gone in with quite a lot of this before and it just... Like already you can see it it's it's very very glowy like if you have really dull dry skin you might really like this because it feels kind of like a a very thin silicony kind of feel it doesn't feel oily per se um i do get a bit confused with primer oils because oils break down makeup traditionally they break down what you've got on your face that's why you usually if you've got oily skin you'd use a matte primer because it stops those oils maybe coming through from your skin and breaking down your makeup or it prevents them coming through from underneath your makeup so we always get a bit confused like what's the point of using an oil as a primer it doesn't really make too much sense to me but if you have dry skin you might really like this if you struggle to get any glow from your products you might really like this one uh, for me i don't really reach for it i don't really use primer anyway because um, i use an spf as a primer and i think if i put on an spf and then i go in with an oil that's gonna break down the spf so for me this isn't a go-to i'll be honest but it doesn't feel horrible on the skin um, it leaves like a slightly tacky feel, but it doesn't feel like heavy or greasy. Uh, it's just not quite for me. Uh, the foundation that I've got is also from the same range. This is the Pro Base Longwear Matte Finish Foundation. And I've got the shade 110 
and 146, hashtag 146. Um, this I actually quite like the finish of, but this breaks me out like nobody's business and my skin's already broken out, so I'm gonna put it on for you today. But in general, I don't reach for this because it breaks me out. I actually bought these two myself in Superdrug. I had no idea what color I would be. I think the color on the outside is actually not that indicative of what's on the inside. I will swatch these two so you can see. The paddle reminds me of year one, year one school. Uh, my first primary school mm -hmm. good times that pr i went to two different primary schools so the first one is really it's casting my mind back but specifically we used to use these in art and yeah it's just a bit nostalgic anyway um that's one one oh and then the top one's one four six so i feel like oh god maybe drop that i feel like the glass bottles make it look a little bit paler as to what it actually is in terms of color but this is very 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 full coverage i'll probably be the lightest shade at the moment yeah I don't have any sort of gradual tanner on or anything so i'm just going to go in and add a bit of this this is super duper full coverage you do not need a lot at all i actually don't have a concealer from mua do they have a concealer i think they must have a standard concealer but not one that i've used and i you know haven't heard rave reviews about their concealer so yeah, let me know if you've tried a concealer from MUA, but I personally haven't. So I'm going to use this as a concealer because it is pretty full coverage. And I would say to its credit, it is very lightweight on the skin. For a matte foundation, it's very, very lightweight. Um, I thought this might be quite a good dupe for the Estee Lauder Double Wear because it is very, very, very full coverage. But I feel like that one is a little bit more long wearing and a bit more kind of thick. This is a very thin formula. Whereas I've always thought of the double wear foundation. I actually never used it myself before I went cruelty free in my makeup. But um, yeah, I always thought of that as quite like a thick foundation, you know, really, really thick on the skin. But this is very lightweight. I don't think it lasts quite as long as that one, though, from what I've heard. You know what? I actually am going to take a little bit of the Revolution concealer that I've been using quite a lot at the moment, just because my eyes are extra specially red from the sensitivity i think it was what brand was it wild nature labs i think was the spf i tried it's spf 30 very 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 fragranced and the filters in it are chemical filters that are very strong and they're they kind of you know that's really intense smell of sunscreen maybe you remember it from a holiday when you're younger it was that very strong scent with a floral scent on top and the fil- oh god, the filters were just making my eyes absolutely stream. And I put it on and left the house with a bit of BB cream on top and I just had like streaks through my BB cream and bronzer because <laughs> my eyes were watering so much. So I need a little bit of concealer. This is an amazing concealer. I will link my Revolution testing videos, like a full face of Revolution makeup. Revolution Pro, Makeup Revolution, XX Revolution. This was one of the highlights. So if you're looking for a good base product that I recommend, this is one. This was their Ultimate Radiant Under Eye Concealer. And I'm in the shade C6, but this video is about MUA. Again, very affordable, but not quite for me, unfortunately. Next up, should we do my brows? I feel like doing my brows. Um, this is their Brow Define Micro, Micro Eyebrow Pencil in the shade, I think it's dark brown. Yeah, dark brown. I actually have one of these open already. So let me get that. I made the very strange move to use a bin, a food bin for my makeup bag. I don't know why I did that. I really don't. It's very impractical. It's quite hard to find things in. Um, yeah, the micro brow pencil is actually one of my faves. For an affordable brow pencil, this one is banging. It's just like the um, Brow Wiz, pretty much, and it's £1.50, something like that. Um, really, really recommend this. I use it all the time. In fact, this might be my favourite product from MUA. It's so good. Really, really thin pencil, nice little spoolie, good colour match for my eyebrows. There's nothing really to complain about, is there? This is a race against time because the sun is starting to set. How many videos of mine is a race against are a race against time? Many, many, many. I feel like I'm saying it every single time. The sun is setting. Rush and do our makeup. I'm just building up the arch a little bit. Same old, same old. I, I just realised I have a little bit of castor oil on my eyebrows. So that's not great. Not a great start because like I say, oil breaks down makeup. I don't even know if castor oil makes a difference. It, it's supposed to make encourage hair growth. Um, and I have actually found using it in the past, it helps, but it tends to make hairs grow underneath my eyebrow as opposed to kind of up here, which is where I want them to go. I don't want them here, I want them here. 
Anyways, um, another brow product that I've used from MUA is this regular eyebrow pencil with blending brush. This sucks. I really don't like this. And I, I suppose if you like the kind of like hourglass arch sort of brow pencil, you might like this. I never understood these kind of pencils that are really thick and kind of like a crayon more than a pencil. It's slanted, but it's very thick and it's not very user friendly. And the spoolie, the spoolie is like a little hairbrush. What is the point? What's the point? Don't rate this one, but the micro brow pencil is excellent. I just had to fish this out of my big makeup box, but this is their Lash and Brow Clear Brow Gel, basically. You can use it as mascara or brow gel. This is not my favorite, I'll be real with you. I think when it comes to brow gel, I am a very tough critic and I will link, I will link my video testing lots of different vegan brow gels, um, but this just doesn't really do much. I do have lots of brow hairs that are pretty long, um, which means that a brow gel needs to have a hold. It can't just be a standard kind of mascara type hold. It needs to be like, but I don't like it to be crunchy. There's a fine line between nice hold and crunchy. Um, my favourites are the Sainsbury's Boutique own brand brow gel, which is £2.50. And a recent favourite is the Revolution Cannabis Sativa, no, Cannabis Sativa? Oh, I'm gonna say it wrong, let me find it. Oh, it just says brow gel on it, but it's this one from the Cannabis range. Or is it, maybe it's CBD, I don't know. I don't know. Um, but yeah, this one's really good actually for a budget option, much better than this. Unfortunately, I'm not raving about MUA in this video. I love their affordability, don't get me wrong, but I'm gonna be honest with you, like if I prefer a different product, I will recommend a different product. I'm not just going to give everything a good review for the sake of it, because that's not what we do. The only bronzer I have from MUA is this one and it's pretty shimmery. Uh, I don't know if they do a matte bronzer, they must do a matte bronzer, but this is their shimmering bronzer powder in Solar Shimmer. Um, it's quite nice actually, it's a nice eyeshadow, <laughs> I forgot the word for eyeshadow. It's a nice eyeshadow and I think if you've got deeper skin this might be a really nice highlight. Um, branded completely wrong for you I know because it says bronzer but that might be a really nice highlight on deeper skin because it's very soft, it's a really sort of soft bronzer. Oh, this is not gonna look good. I can tell it's gonna, this is not gonna look good. It really won't. I'm gonna take a lot of blending to get this done. That's my bin shutting, my makeup bin. I feel like that oil makes certain products cling. <sighs> oh dear, 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 that's not what you want. I don't love this product for me. I think if I was just putting it on here as a highlighter, it'd probably be fine. But for me with the, mm, yeah, that's not what you want, is it? It's kind of like balling up and coming off. I might actually skip this, but I actually think this is a nice product. I just think that base oil does actually make products cling onto it in, in quite an odd fashion, especially if it's a powder product. Obviously, oils and powders don't always mix too well when you're kind of trying to blend it out nicely. So let's. I'm just going to skip to a contour stick from Oma Beauty. This is, just pretend you're not seeing this. Doo -doo 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 -doo. When it comes to blush, MUA do a nice matte blush. Um, I had their Papaya Whip one, which is nice. It's very fair, but then they go quite deep with their blushes, which is nice. And they're just quite nice matte blonde, blonde blushes, quite nice matte formulations. Um, but yeah, I don't currently have that in my collection. So I'm just using my Sainsbury's one, which I always use. When it comes to highlighter, MUA have quite a few highlighters. I'll run through these three and then I'll let you know about my favourite that I use all the time. In fact, this might be my favourite. Tied with the brow product, this might be my absolute favourite. But they have a shimmer silk, which is very dirty. Um, this is the shade First Light and it is, it's kind of, oh, I never know if it's iridescent or holographic. And I know people get very precious about the difference between the two. Um, but yeah, it's quite a subtle, this still looks really patchy, doesn't it? Hmm. Just ignore this part of my face. Um, yeah, it's quite a subtle highlight. Not quite my cup of tea. I don't really like uh, highlighters with a pink reflex. So this is not my personal favourite. And they also have a light luster range, which I think is like relatively new, maybe a couple years old. Um, this is their highlighter kit in Golden Kisses. This reminds me a lot of the Kathleen Lights and Makeup Geek collaboration. If you like a blinding highlight and you don't mind a little bit of texture, this is va va It's intense, but 
and and you can see it picks up a little bit of texture but it i think it would look really nice as kind of like a body highlight if you just put it sort of here it would be really nice but you do get bang for your buck for that one and i do prefer it to this bigger palette this is their ultimate palette and whilst i like these i've kind of used them before as eyeshadows um and you obviously you get a lot of different tones so whatever your skin tone hopefully you'll find one to suit your complexion um they're not quite as they're nice don't get me wrong but they're they look very nice there actually they're very thin if that makes sense like they're quite hard formulations maybe once i tap into these a little bit more they'll be nice but used with a finger on the eyelid they look really nice uh yeah that's them they look really nice and and very smooth but kind of on the face with a brush you don't get quite as much impact but i do like this palette i think it's a little bit smoother than this one just in comparison i think this is a little bit more pigmented but this is much smoother on the skin on the eyelids um so that's that palette but my absolute favorite are these drops these are the liquid highlight wonder drops or liquid highlight drops in the shade wonder i think they have a couple of shades i think maybe like three or four um, and this is actually a little bit maybe deep for my skin tone but it does work trust me it works once you blend it out so i'm just gonna pop it on with a sponge again ignore this part of my forehead because i look very patchy but it's just a gorgeous kind of cat hair it's got quite a deep bronzy base this one which is why i think i probably need more of a gold than a bronze but actually once you blend it into the skin all you can really see is the it, it kind of catching the light it's very pretty it does have quite a silicon feel but i quite like that it feels really lightweight on the skin it lasts well it looks very natural it looks just like a glow from within and it reminds me of all those kind of like iconic london drops or you know cu custom cover effects drops all those things but this is four pound really really recommend this i think the amount of product you get i compared it to a charlotte tilbury highlighter wand the charlotte tilbury one is nearly 30 pounds for i think you get like 12 milliliters this is four pounds for 30 milliliters and the effect of the two is very very similar very similar really recommend these i think they are brilliant when it comes to eyeshadow palettes mua have loads of different options i think some of them are a little bit hit or miss but i do really like this tropical oceana palette it. they are very affordable shadows so i think like manage your expectations they're not the highest quality ever but i think if you want something that lets you play with different colors um and are quite easy to work with i do actually recommend this palette i think it's really pretty because you've got you know a line of blues a line of greens purples pinks and oranges and they work well together they work well on their own i, I just really like this palette i have got a video using uh this palette i think i did a blooming pink look so i'll link that if you want to check it out uh, but today i probably am just going to go in with this light luster palette and use these as eyeshadows they also do essential eyeshadow singles if you fancy having a single i prefer um palettes i always think a single eyeshadow needs to be pretty darn nice for me to go to the effort of using it i'm just using a little bit of this single eyeshadow in burnt umber because all of those eyeshadows or highlighters are actually shimmery obviously because they're highlighters so i'm just going to pop some of this in my crease actually rather pigmented i do think the quality of these are quite nice i used to have one called mushroom i think or shiitake mushroom or something and they are very nice they blend really nicely i just not really a fan of single eyeshadows i think they're quite impractical but if you're the kind of person that just literally uses a little bit of shadow in your crease you might quite like these because they like i say i think the quality of these singles is better than the quality of the mattes in their palettes i'm going to take a little bit of this on my lower lash line as well this is an MOTD smudger brush. And then, I'm not sure what colour to take. I'm going to take this one. It doesn't have a shade name. Again, this is a highlighter palette, not an eyeshadow palette, but you know, makeup can be used for more than one thing. The only time I think that's a bit dodgy is when you're using something that's made for your lips on your eyes or your eyes on your lips, and you're going to go between the two. I'm going to take this shade on the palette and put it on my brow bone i feel like this needs a little bit of eyeliner but i actually don't have an mua liquid liner so i'm just going to use my regular mina eyeliner quickly when it comes to mascara um i have tried this eye define nourish and care by mua which has been made vegan since they went completely vegan um this is not my favorite maybe i have to use it a little bit longer to dry it out a bit to get the best out of it but it's not my favorite spoiler alert it's kind of like this and it's just 
a little bit lackluster however they do dupe the benefit their real mascara really nicely this is their amplify statement lash mascara which is very nice for quite a va va voom sort of look this i have in black brown and black and i think i'm going to use black today i accidentally picked up black brown the first time i bought it that's my bad um but this is what the brush looks like very similar to benefit their real and it's a very similar effect quite a volumizing almost like spidery effect but in a nice way this plastic brush grabs hold of all the lashes quite well I don't know why I apply mascara like this. <laughs> blink. Why do I blink into it? I just find it gives a more natural kind of spread. I do feel like my face is dying for some bronzer. A little bit of warmth since the bronzer failed. But anyway, moving swiftly on to the last step, which is li lips. Now I do have a nude lipstick from their standard satin lipstick range which is very nice the formula is amazing i think they could work on the tones of their formulations a bit better in terms of the lip colors they're not my favorite colors um i wish they had just a standard pink nude or a you know pinky ready sort of shade um in that range but saying that in their stylo range super stylo satin finish lipstick like crayons these are amazing i have a nude shade and this red which is gorgeous it's a really intense creamy lipstick very pigmented look at this hmm. crazy pigmented i mean they last about as long as creamy lipsticks should do they're not especially long wearing but with this i tend to put a bit on with a bit of lip balm in fact i do have a lip liner from MUA. let me see if i can find it yeah they've got these wooden lip liners this is the intense color lip liner in couture a bright pink i like these I think I prefer the Barry M wooden lip liners a tiny bit more, but I do really like these. I am a wooden lip liner gal at heart, but the lip stylos are really good. I think their lip products in general are nice in terms of their lip colours. Lip glosses, I think there's a little bit of work to be done, if I'm being completely honest. This is their plumping lip gloss and this is their sugared tinted lip gloss. The sugared one is pretty, the plumping one is not very good. I think if you want a plumping lip gloss that's affordable, I recommend the Revolution Maxi Plump or Revolution, it's got a million words in the name, but I think it's their Plump Bomb, something like that. I have one here. It's called Pout Bomb Maxi Plump Plumping Lip Gloss. What a ridiculously long name, but this is amazing. This is actually plumping, whereas this, it feels like a cheap Poundland make you know makeup that's affordable doesn't have to feel cheap but this does this is not great um but i'll put a little bit of the sugared lip gloss on because this is tinted a really nice sort of metallic not usually into metallic lip products but it's almost like a shimmery kind of metallic and it is very pretty and comfortable and i do recommend these i think they're good for the value of the money the value of the money good value for money and that is pretty much it i think i'm aware we're running out of daylight but i'm gonna put a bit of black brown on my lower lash line and the last product I wanted to mention is this. This is the Light Luster spray, like setting spray from MUA. Um, they have a whole range of Light Luster products. This I keep just for the mesmerizing swirlies. I don't know if you can see it properly. I do have an Instagram post on this, but do you know what it reminds me of? Those kind of squishy things that used to slip through your hands and you just keep going and going and they were iridescent like this. Um, but yeah, I don't tend to use this too much. I don't really use setting sprays, but I do remember this having quite a forceful, oh no, that's all right, that's okay. Maybe I'm getting confused with the Pacifica one. It has a bit of fragrance in it, that's why I wasn't using it. A bit of fragrance, and after my face has gone through a lot with the SPF earlier, I didn't want to use fragrance again, but this is the shade Mesmerising, and if you like these kind of glowy setting sprays, this might be something you want to look into. But I think with that oil, you don't really need any more glow. I don't think you need any more glow. Just to reiterate, my favourite products, the Micro Brow Pencil is really good, great value for money. The MUA Light Luster Highlighter is so nice, sits on the skin beautifully, no texture, no bumpies, it's just, yeah, seamless on the skin. I think it's amazing and the value for money, the amount you get, £4 for 30 mil is pretty darn good and their super stilos are really really good. And that's pretty much it for my MUA testing video. I really hope you enjoyed. I will leave any other testing videos you might want to check out down below, all vegan and cruelty free and affordable. We love affordable makeup. Um, I want to try e.l.f. next. I don't think I have enough for a full face but hopefully soon I'll be able to do a full face of 
of Elf because I love a lot of their stuff. And yes, thank you ever so much for watching. Please subscribe if you want to and hopefully I will see you very soon. Bye!